Okay, well, I wonder if we should go ahead and uh, get started then. I think this is good. Yeah, yeah and if people come in, and, uh, um, you can, you or Gur can welcome them in if, and share the handout if that's needed. Sure. Okay, um, so I will go ahead and share my screen and we'll get going. So how this is going to work is this is really a demo sort of session and um, and I'll go through the steps kind of of how to sort of get set up and how to use it. Um, and you can ask questions along the way if there's something that you um, see that isn't clear or you personally have had some issue with already <laughs> and would like clarification. Um, and I will say that Zotero has a forum that is really fantastic. And actually they're very active on Twitter. So you can always ask them a question on Twitter and they will get back. I, um, cause I follow them on Twitter. And sometimes I see them interacting with different people. So uh, it is an open source tool and they are open to, um, to collaborating with you to make it better. So that's great. Okay, sharing screen. see that I was there. Let's see. I'm trying to get to where I want to go. This is where I was. Why? There we go. This is what I need. <clears throat> in virtual times, we must kind of find ways to keep connected to people in virtual tabletop games I'm experimenting with. Okay. So here is Zotero, and, um, which is zotero.org. That's the main um, website that you will find it at. And it, it, it does run on Mac, Windows, and Linux. And we're going to down, you go to the download, download page when you click on that red button. And it's going to be able to tell what type of computer you're on. And it will tell what browser you're using. And currently, um, it's not operating on Safari. So normally, I do all of my work stuff in Safari. And unfortunately, Safari, Apple has made their Safari system more closed. And that means it doesn't work with an open system very well. Uh, but Chrome and Firefox work. We can check over here to see what the other browsers are in case you're curious. And see, it says Safari, but I am not, I have found elsewhere. I don't know why that's still there because my error message said it wasn't working. So I should follow up and see if they've got a, if they've updated it. It did not work for me. But Firefox and uh, Chrome are definitely working. So this is really important to remember. And if you look in the handout, it says you have to install both pieces. Okay, I have to reiterate that you must install both pieces. So both the app for Zotero and the connector, they do not work without each other. You must have both, must have both. Okay, very, very important to have both pieces. Um, and it will not function with the other. And it should come with the plugins, like some basic plugins like the Microsoft Word plugin, which is very useful to have, okay? Uh, so then, once you have it, let me go over to so the handout. Um, there is a little quick tool, the Sotero bib, that allows you, that's kind of like a lot of the other like noodle tools and I don't know, all the different ones out there that you can make really quick citations with if you need to. Um, it's not the best for long-term planning, but if you need to make something quick, then that's, that can be useful for you, okay? So again, download the app and download the connector. There are some um, apps for smartphones and tablets. Those get updated all the time. So there might even be better ones now than there were um, six months ago. But you can look uh, by through your app and see like your app store and see if they have one that works. Okay, so how do we start putting things into our Zotero? So there are multiple ways that we can get items into our Zotero. One of which is to just do them as you're searching on the web. So if we go over to the library's homepage, go past our announcements, scroll down, and we'll do area circle, why not? Search. So this can be done in the library catalog. This actually also works in Amazon, it works on Google, it works on our, a majority of our library databases, maybe not all of them, but a majority of them. Um, so I have to move my little zoom thing because it's kind of in the way <clears throat> as it loads. Now what else, what, uh, what happens is, is that, okay, so you have the app Zotero and then you have 
the browser connector, right? Two pieces, you have the two pieces. So here is my Zotero browser connector and you can see it says save to Zotero. Um, that's gonna put it into the app and this is my app for Zotero. I have a lovely demo folder so whenever I do these things, stuff gets saved into here, all kinds of variety of topics. Um, and so if I were to go, let's go back to this page. If I were to click on this, now we see what we see, this icon, you might not be able to see, it's very tiny, is a folder. And what that means is that when there's a folder icon, that means there's a whole list of items, not just one particular type, but a list. And so I click on that, and it'll now give me the list. And I can choose which of these I might want to add. Um, so if you have a list of results and you just want to pick the ones that you're most interested in, then you can select those and say, okay, and it's going to save and it's asking me which folder do I want to save it to demo is great. So I hit enter and that goes off. Now let's test the system a little bit. Let's see if it can tell that this is a video. I'm going to find out. I clicked on it. Is it going anywhere? I can't tell. Click, click. Uh, it's, this system is a little funny because it sort of has this frames interface. You can see that there's this whole thing going on behind, uh, the screen and that might make it so that it can't see that this is an individual item as opposed to a list. Um, the internet seems to be a little slow, which is not surprising because we have so many people online right now. Hmm. That's a very messy page. Wow, look at that. I don't know if you guys see exactly the same thing I do, but what a mess. <laughs> it's like doubled over. <sighs> um, it shouldn't do that, but there is an export to Zotero button here. Uh, this over here should have changed to the picture of like an um, eyeball camera. That's what it does when it recognizes what the source is. But I think because of the way that this database works with the background still being there, it still only can see that there's a list. It doesn't see this individual item. And that's okay because we can still pull it from the list. And if we click on the import, export to zero, um, export to Zotero, I can speak. I, I don't know if this is gonna work right now just because the system is dragging really badly. So that is something you can play with and find out how that works because it's not going to demo right now and I'm not gonna, I don't wanna spend too long on that. Um, so you can pull things by going to websites and adding them in. Let's try another one while that is just dilly-dallying. Let's go over to a database so we can see it in there and we can even, oh, maybe it's my internet. Okay. Let's click on databases A to Z. We'll just go to academic search complete for simplicity's sake. I might have to log in or it might remember me. It apparently does. If you're off campus, remember you have to enter your net ID and password. Oh, let's do this. I was doing this for a patron the other day. They were asking about bilingual and we realized there's a whole slew of synonyms for bilingual. Remember, same concept, same box. Different concept, different box. So again, we have our list. Right, so we have a little fold over here because we have a list, list of results. Um, if we look at one in particular, let's see, um, hopefully this will work. Yeah, now you see it changes, right, to what the item is. So this is, recognizes that this is a scholarly article and it turns into this white little sheet. That means it understands it's an article. Um, and if I go click over here, add to demo, I could go back. I didn't show you guys, but it does come in here eventually. It takes a little while for it to, all the systems to sync up. But if you have a long list like I do in this case, you can always search up here at the top. Or my circle. See, there's my circle ones that I did, that I added earlier. Oh, and did you see that? Let me go back. See, this one has the eyeball, right? Because it's a video. Um, like a video camera, and then this is an article, so it has the article notation. So the icons do kind of give you a sense. We can see there's some books in here. This means it's a website. I can't remember, maybe that means thesis. This is a newspaper. 
Um, so we do get some different, different symbols to give you an, a clue as to what kind of information format it is, right? And that matters when we're doing citations. We need to know what the information format is, what the material type is. Okay, so we grab from websites like this. And when we do this, okay, home and community. Let me go back and show you home and community. That's this one right here. You can see that the PDF comes with it, right? Um, and so not only do we have all this metadata about it, but um, we also have the article itself right here that you can double click on and see. I see that there are some chat things going on. Um, yeah, sorry, see, so you'll see that it's there. Um, you just, it, it should show, it should figure out what kind of computer you have. Okay, uh, so that's kind of grabbing it from websites. Um, you can, like I said, double check the metadata um, because occasionally it will pull something and look kind of messy. In this case, like everything looks fine, but I've seen names occasionally misspelled. Um, like if this is all in caps, that happens, like the entire article titles in caps, that's not right. So you have to fix that. Okay, so the, the data set is not always perfect, but it's pretty decent. And I made a note here that, oops, go to the right, there we go. Um, when you add things in, you can, so you can edit manually, you can add tags. So I can um, add a tag here. Sometimes it comes like this comes with tags which can be useful. But whenever I add my own personal tags, I always put a hashtag in front of it because then I know it came from me, not the database. Um, and I could say like unread, right? That this one, I haven't read this one yet. So it's a way to kind of organize your, um, your, all the citations you're finding. And then I could always search this for everything that says um, unread. A number of them I've tagged that way, right? So it could be a quick way to find if you're like, oh, I can't remember what it was called, but I know I tagged it as unread, then you'll be able to find it much quicker that way. Okay, then you can retrieve metadata for PDFs. So if you have, not just from found on Google, but if you have right now in um, on your desktop, you have a bunch of PDFs that you've already found, like articles you've already found, um, you can drag them over into Zotero. I wish, I don't think I have any off the top of my head right here. Readings. Like I could take all these, all of these came from it. So I likely if I were to just drag them into it, they would, um, but I could do it. Let's, let's try one and see what happens. It's not dragging. Oh, it's so hard to move. Okay, that's a problem. I have to move this over here. Okay. Without a mouse, it's like really hard to move. Oh, okay. Doing it this way. These problems without a mouse. That's what I should have grabbed from work was my mouse. That would have been smart. Why won't you? Okay. So I don't know if that ended up going in because I have very limited ability to drag around without a mouse that I did not realize was gonna be so bad. It didn't go in, of course it didn't go in. Anyways, you can drag and drop in. I can't demo that right now because I don't have a mouse and it's very difficult for me to move things around apparently. So um, drag and drop it in and then you can write, you should automatically do it. So the way the system is set up now is that if you drop a PDF into Zotero, just throw it in there, it's going to immediately search for the metadata about it and create an entry for it. In the olden days, you had to right click on it and say retrieve metadata, but you don't have to do that anymore. So you just drag and drop it in, it'll immediately pull up the metadata and create a citation like item record for it, um, which is really great. So that's why I'm saying if you happen to have, I really wish I could get this to go. Did that work? Oh, there it is. Let's see if it works. I got one in, finger work. It didn't do it automatically, that's okay. Um, so here I can say retrieve metadata for PDF. Ah, oh, so this one doesn't have it. So that's what happens, beware. Some of your PDFs like this one 
doesn't have it. So this depends on somebody having the same PDF somewhere on the old internet. So it doesn't always work. Um, and sometimes it does. If this, if it doesn't work, then you have to create, you have to go find the source and add it in. Go back to, not this one, go back to wherever you found it originally and pull the data from here, okay? Uh, so then we have folders and things of that sort, creating folders. So once you start getting a lot of resources in here, you are going to be overwhelmed. Um, like this is clearly, my demo folder is a mess. Like this just totally random stuff. But everything else I started organizing, right? So into different like themes or purposes. Um, I even do things like recipes. Um, I throw them in there. Uh, but whatever your research topic is or project is, you can create a folder for that and um, start putting things in there. And of course an item. So everything is in your my library is like your base set, like it's everything. Everything is in your library. Everything is there by default. That's where it goes if you don't put it anywhere. Um, and then you can put it into multiple of these collections afterwards. They call them collections, not folders, but they're basically folders. So an item can be in multiple folders at any given time. It doesn't have to just be in one place. Um, and you can drag and drop those things around. Um, occasionally, like so this, are, these are all my unfiled things. They're not in any folder, which might be nice to peek at every once in a while because you might save stuff in there um, accidentally. Uh, so you can do that. Other times you might do have duplicates, like you've just pulled, you've pulled the same thing more than once. Um, and you can do things to merge these two together so that you don't have the duplicates unless you don't mind having duplicates. I find clearly I haven't cleared my duplicates up yet. Um, so yeah, items can be in more than one location. They can easily be saved in the wrong collection, but again, you can search, use the search feature and that will search all the collections. Um, and you, when you do things on, when you are adding things to your, from the web, it always asks you like where you want to save it, right? So you can always pick somewhere else. I can say go to any of these other places. Um, one thing I haven't found is that if I change my mind, oh yeah, you can hit escape if you don't want to do it, okay? And if you remove it from a collection, um, that just takes it out of the collection. Like you delete from the collection, it's still in your library. Okay, just taking it out of collection doesn't mean it's gone forever. Just means it's out of that collection. If you delete things from your library, no, nope, I keep clicking on the button. If you delete things from your library, my library, then they go into the trash. Um, and you have to manually clear out your trash. I have nothing in here because I haven't deleted anything recently. Um, so now what I would do for my library, if I just do it from here, it's not going to, for my demo, it's not going to take it away. Um, so it's a little hard to just accidentally get rid of stuff is the point. Okay. You have to kind of be really intentional about that. Otherwise it'll be in your trash. Now, once you have things inside of your Zotero, there are a couple of different ways you can do things with it. Um, they, the one that you can do really quickly um, is that you can right click. So um, oh, well, this is actually, sorry, this section right here is just if you, if you have things, so if you need to move a collection from, like you've been working in Zotero, and now you have a new project, a uh, new faculty member advisor, a new project coordinator, and they say they're using EndNote or Mendeley or one of these other tools, you can always export all that information to move it into another tool, okay? It's not like it's stuck here and you'll never be able to access it from somewhere else. And vice versa, if you have EndNote right now or you have Mendeley, usually all you have to do is do the same thing, export from them into an RIS file and then import that into Zotero. And it does happen that, you know, different research projects are using different tools. I like Zotero a lot because it's open source. It's not dependent upon you being at Cal State East Bay or any other university or at any other company. Um, and you can have multiple email accounts associated with Zotero. So it's not like you're stuck to just having it through one account. Um, I think Gurr has like three or four different emails <laughs> with theirs. <laughs> I might have two with mine. Um, so, uh, and then let's see, we can do, um, so syncing is important. 
So uh, you will create your account. I think you create it on the website, actually. That I'm not entirely sure, but um, because it's been so long since I registered for an account, but <laughs> you register and then in the Zotero app. So I think, yeah, you register on the website. Then with the app, you wanna sync it to the account that you made at the Zotero website by going into your system preferences. Um, preferences go to sync and make sure that your account is linked here, okay? Um, and then you can choose how you wanna sync things um, and reset. I'm definitely not resetting, so I'm not pressing that button, okay? And check the automatic syncing button, that's your best. You, by default, actually it was 300 megabytes, it might've gone up, it goes up every year or so as you know, space changes. I haven't writ, run into a problem yet with the free storage. I've never paid for it. Um, and what that means is, you know how I showed you that there were PDFs in there? Um, so basically the PDFs are kind of sitting sort of on their system. They're also on your desktop. I'm not really sure entirely how you always hit it, but I have not run into a problem. So I'm, I think you could probably have a Zotero account and not have to worry about paying for space. Okay, any questions about any of this? I covered a lot of, I covered, you know, getting it, creating stuff. So how do you get it into it? How do you organize it? Um, how do you connect everything? So a lot of time in academia and um, research, we are doing collaborations. We are not doing things by ourselves. It happens on occasion you are, um, but more than likely you're going to be doing this with other people, maybe an advisor, maybe other students, maybe other colleagues. Uh, so group libraries is absolutely essential. And actually, I primarily use Zotero now for my group work. I very rarely am saving stuff in there just for myself. It's mostly for the group work. So you create groups also at the Zotero website. Um, and let's here. Do, do, do. I'm trying to remember which browser I'm in. Okay, let's go over here. Let's log in. I used my personal account. So I'll have to remember the password. That's always fun. Let's try that and see. Every time I do this, I'm like, Liz, what did I choose? Huh, I did it correctly. I'm so proud of myself. Okay, I remembered. So we go to settings. Oh, um, and this is where you can check on your information about yourself and you can upload CDs. Like if you have more than one email account associated with it. Um, different things you can do. Groups is actually where I really wanted to go. Sorry, I got into the uh, other stuff. So groups. So you can see I've created groups a couple times when I've done these demos. Um, and you can decide different kinds of things about your group. Um, you can give it a name, a description, a discipline. You can create a URL for it. You can do, let's see, is that gonna take me to the same page or something different? Yeah, that's this page. Okay, so then we go to member settings and this is where you invite people. You can choose at this point, I think it's, you know, what their level of power is. Under library settings, you decide if it's private, public closed, public open. Gur has a fantastic, I think, if I'm remembering, um, Zotero collection that's public open related to um, autism resources. Uh, which is really phenomenal that you can do that through this. Um, and you can see what other kinds of like, who can read it, who can edit it, who can share the files within it. So a lot of different settings in by creating them here in the groups online. And then, so, you know, it's a really good place to share your resources. And then back over, where's my Zotero? Here it is. Okay. Sorry, this is close here. So here's my group libraries and uh, how I use them. So this was me and one other person. We just made it very simple. It like, is it gonna go on our lit review? Is it not gonna go on our lit review? Okay, <laughs> that simple. Um, and then we uh, made notes for the ones that were useful. And then the, these ones are not ones that have this one. Like, and so you could see Jeff, he added a note and what he thought about this article. And I added a note and what I thought about the article. Um, so just to give us a little bit of a heads up and you can see the full text is here. Um, I didn't fix this one, but I probably should have 
made that a capital C. That was a manual correction that I would do. Um, so I think that would make it more accurate. Um, so these are ways that you can share with another person what you kind of learned. It's not super interactive, it's kind of flat, but it was um, useful, it was, it was essential, it was sufficient for what we needed to do. That's what I'm trying to say, sufficient. And then in this other research article, um, we divided work up by people. So you can see that each person had their own folder and they were like, we asked them, okay, you read these, this article set and let us know what you think about it, you know, and then put it into like, if we we're going to keep it, if we we're not going to keep it, we wanted to know which things related to surveys. We have different projects. So for the poster, we had a subset of our overall references list for the poster that we worked on. Right. Um, I think this might be for the first article. Um, I'm not sure it's been a while. So different kinds of purposes for the different folders that are really useful. Um, I think Gur and I did the same, like we also broke ours down by the different type of work, the different project within the overall project, right? Again, a poster versus an article. Um, so you can see how useful it is to have these groups. Any questions about the groups? I suspect that will be what you will be using the most. And you just need to know what their username is to add them to your group. You need to, or their email that's associated with their account. Um, that works. And you can create collections within your groups, further sub collections within the collections as much as you want. Okay, so now we actually want, just making sure no other questions. Now we want, let's say we want to actually produce the bibliography, right? We want the citation list. So this is all really good, Jeffra. I'm glad I can organize all this information this way, but what else can Zotero do? Well, Zotero can also um, make your citations for you, okay? So there's the simple way, the quickest way is the copy and paste, which could be done in like an email to somebody. It's not what you're gonna wanna do in your final version for sure, but it's um, a Band-Aid quick approach sort of. And so that would be by um, clicking, going over to something and uh, you go right click on it and you say, create bibliography from item. It'll ask you what style you want. Where do you want it done in a in-text citation mode is what that means or a bibliography mode. Um, how do you want it? But if you do bibliography, copy to clipboard, Say, okay, um, oh, I see something here on the chat, okay. And then we put it in, you can just see what it, just so you can see what it looks like if I do copy paste. So there, that's an APA style. Um, approximately, it's not perfect, you still have to fix it. Those should be lower cases, by the way, right there, the ends, it's not title case. Um, but it gets you started on a citation. So really quick copy and paste, that method works very well, okay? Um, and like I said, it's just like you could do it in an email really quickly, I think. You could do it also if you had to just turn in a brief bibliography list for a class, if they wanted you to just turn in like five citations for a bibliography, then, then, then you could just copy and paste those really quick. It's not a bad way to do that either. Um, there's a little bit, if you didn't notice, there's a little bit of weird um, alignment. It's, oh yeah, it goes over for some reason, it goes over, I don't know why it's doing that. So you have to just kind of fix that. I've noticed that happens each time with the copy and paste, it's very peculiar. Um, so just pay attention to that piece. Was there a question on chat? I thought there might have been one. Yes, there's a question. Uh, what other app we might use that is similar to this one? You mean like what other apps is similar? Like what other bibliographic management software tool is similar to Zotero? Is that sort of the question? Um, if it is, uh, then there are things like Mendeley is one, EndNote is another. I think those are the uh, RefWorks, the four 
major ones at this point. Yeah, for Zotero, Mendeley, and Note and RefWorks, those are the four major ones. RefWorks is behind a paywall. EndNote has a free version, but it's limited. Uh, Mendeley also has a free version um, and also has an institutional one. And I think there's more premium benefits with the paid for version of Mendeley. It's by Elsevier, a large, ginormous, mega money making machine. Um, whereas Zotero out of all of these is open and open source. So that's why I'm a big proponent of uh, Zotero. And that's why I do the workshops in Zotero. <laughs> So great question though. It's really good to know what's out there because people might be asking you to use it. So yeah, thanks. Okay, so then, uh, so that's the quick copy and paste way to do the bibliography. And then the other one is the Microsoft Word toolbar plugin or the Google Docs. So if I jump back over to a Word document, um, you can see I have a Zotero tab here. And I can insert and add a citation in by clicking on that add button. Now, this is, I have this in the notes and I highly recommend that you write it down or you burn this into your brain cells. I do not find this fancy interface useful. I find this really annoying. I do not like it. I don't, I think it's limited in its use. So I always switch to the classic view. Okay, and I have that again on the handout written out, but you can make an extra note of that if you'd like. And the reason is because look at what this classic view has. It has all this, you can see the list. So you make sure you're in the right folder to begin with. You, um, you can do multiple sources because sometimes you might be saying things like, studies have shown that. Well, if you do that, then you have to have multiple sources, right? And so then you can click multiples of these to go over, right? Just Toss these both over there. You can add page numbers. If you're doing a quote, then you need to add a page number. Um, sometimes you're saying Smith uh, wrote that the economy was free, whatever. And if you say the name, the author's name, then you have to suppress the author information because all we need is the year if we're doing APA, for example. So um, this is where you're gonna have that ability to um, fine tune how Zotero inputs the citation information into your document. Okay, so I click on OK as an example for right now. It takes a little work. And now, oh, and it's using um, ACS because I taught this in a chemistry class recently. So that's why we, it looks so funny. And then I say insert, um, add the bibliography. And there are the two citations right in here. Now, and you can see when I click on it, it's gray, right? And this is gray. And that's because this is in here via Zotero code. So if I didn't like something in here, like this dash B, um, hyphen B, I guess that's because the first name's hyphenated, um, I could go, I'd have to go into Zotero itself to make corrections. You don't want to make the, the corrections here. So if I go into Zotero, um, directly actually i don't know where where i got these from <laughs> i've already like forgotten where i pulled these two from that's pretty funny um let's see over here it is subject to subject bibliographer work maccabee and maccabee and Metz. okay maccabee and Metz. change the order maccabee and Metz. if i say like i think okay these should actually be lowercase not cap title case. I can switch them all up here. And then that will be changed on the actual sheet itself, I believe, assuming I should have changed this anyways, because it should be in lowercase. Um, so now if I go back over here to my Word document, and I click refresh. Well, it might, it might take a little while just because the internet these days is slow. So um, it's gonna have to run through the Zotero cloud, <laughs> then run to my computer, and that could take a little while. I'm just realizing that normally that works really fast, but I have no, I don't know when 
Um, I have to, I might have to sync this in order for that to, I have to click this sync button probably first. And that could take a while. So today is a slow day for internet. Anyways, let's try something else. So let's say um, you thought you were supposed to do it in one citation style and then your professor or a colleague said, hey, that's the wrong citation style. We're actually like, this is an ACS. And I'm like, I didn't mean to do this in ACS. I actually want to do it in APA. So you go to document preferences, change it. And I, okay, well, let's change it over to APA. Um, and you can always add more styles by manage styles. So if the citation style you don't, you want is not here, click there. So then I click OK. It works on it, thinks about it, says that's hard, and then changes it. And now you can see that the in-text citation changed to APA style. And this went to lowercase because it finally picked up my lowercase change that I had done. <laughs> Took a little while, but it got it eventually. OK. Um, and there, see, there's something weird here, this TFH. I'd have to go back to the METS one, see what that is. Oh, see this, I don't know what that is, but I would delete it because that's useless. Information, not useful at all. Um, and then you would sync it again and you would go back over here and refresh and it might take a while. It's gonna take a while. Um, but anyways, so that's the other great thing about using Zotero is because now when you embed things in your, when you embed these citations in, you can, you have all this flexibility to change them and add them. Um, and you want it to be doing it, not you, right? Because, <laughs> and then, okay, so here's the, let me look at my, let me make sure I'm following on track here. So we looked at the classic view, we added a bibliography. Um, and we can change it based on the different document preferences, the different styles we want. So before you submit it to anybody, like as um, to be published or for homework, whatever, you need to remove the Zotero code, okay? That's very important because it will look weird on another person's computer and so you need to remove the Zotero code. And there is a button here, um, for that, oh, it's called unlink citations. That is removing the Zotero code, is unlink citations. But before you do that, again, this is, I have a couple of things that are always super important that I really want people to remember. And the one is to change it to classic mode. <laughs> the second is when you unlink citations. So yes, do this. But before you unlink citations, always copy the file, right? So do a save as, save as with a Z at the end, you know that that is your one that has the Zotero code in. Because the moment you remove, you unlink the citations, the, you remove the Zotero code, you can't get it back, okay? It is now just a regular old Word document and you would have to go in and manually change any of the citations, okay? Which isn't the end of the world, but um, it's much nicer if you have a live document still that you can edit the, the Zotero with. So, You'll probably want to unlink citations when you submit something, but you most definitely will always want to keep a file that has the active Zotero inside of it. Okay, does that make sense? So that's here. I have a notation about that. Co save a copy with the code. Always do that. All right. Um, so that's the bibliography aspect of putting it in. And you can do this in a Google Doc as well. Um, although, um, I'm trying to think. Um, I don't know if it ha how all the features work as well in it. The features may be um, not quite as fancy as those. I think they're continually revising that. Um, but again, you follow the same pattern of my suggestions. Okay, lastly is if you're curious um, where all these files are going, these PDF, PDFs that get saved into Zotero, um, you can go follow this breadcrumb trail here to see where they are. And if you are trying to clear it out, like this became important when they upgraded a version, they 
um, had a new Zotero app and it was such a radically different Zotero app that it had a whole new location file for all of my Zotero folders. I mean, Zotero files, and it couldn't find my old files. So it was important to know where they had been and then I could kind of move things around. So this is just a good, good information to have um, and to know where they are. And then if you are, if you need to clear it out, um, you could do that. I can't remember where the instance was where I needed to know that specifically, but it's just useful information to have. And then again, finally, if you have questions, you can go to the Zotero forum. It is really useful. Um, they really do have a lot of information there. Um, it's very active with people participating and you can search within it. Um, there's a freeze issue on Windows 10. Testing, oh, he see they're doing beta testing for the Zotero connector for Safari 13. So that one still, that's why I didn't do it at Safari because I'm like, I feel like it's still um, in progress. And then you can see that these are all announcements. So there's some changes to the APA style in the seventh edition. That was just done two days ago. So um, people are always working to make it better. Um, and I really appreciate that. And like I said, you can use um, Twitter and they seem to be very responsive on Twitter. And I, yeah, that's just great to have. So are there other questions that I can answer for you today? Anything more complicated about Zotero? Because I sort of did a crash course through it really quickly. Did you guys, were you able to access the handout? Get a hold of that, save it onto your computer. There's a little yes button, but maybe you can't see that in your participant section. <laughs> Click on the yes. Thanks, Tom, I see your yes. There's yeses and nos and go slower and go faster. Kind of interesting. Oh, there's a thumbs up and a thumbs down too. Yes, um, it's probably as you go through and do it, I'm sure you will encounter um, more challenges as you do it. Um, watching someone do it always can seem pretty simple. And then when you go back, it's uh, the challenges pop up when you do it yourself. So, um, and I have so many things already set up in mind. So, but definitely um, you can email me if you have any questions along the way. I hope this was helpful to you. Um, Glad we could meet virtually, briefly, shortly. <laughs> Anything else, Tom or Gurr, or what do you think? This was great, thanks, Jeffra. And also folks, if you wanna see the full schedule of um, library workshops, which will all be online now that we're <laughs> in a shelter in place, um, if you go to the library website, um, it's library.csueastbay.edu slash events. That's our full events calendar. Mm -hmm. There'll be more coming next week, in fact. Oh, yes. I'll get ready for Tuesday. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you, everybody. I think we're ready to sign off. And again, email me. Um, if you have troubles along the way, check out the forum, ask them on Twitter, all kinds of great ways to get help with this tool. So um, it's really a great one. Okay. Thanks, folks. Remember Bye. to wash your hands. Yes. <laughs> Don't touch your face like I did. <laughs> right. <laughs>